So I'm here in a silly hat <laughs> at a Porsche driving day today. Okay, as Nick with the helmet just said, uh, I recently did a Porsche experience day with my friend Peter and I found it to be a very interesting day and I wanted to share that experience with you guys a little bit. So the rest of this video is going to be a voiceover. I'm going to um, piece together some of the footage I took in the cars for that day and give you some feedback on my experience. You know, uh, a Porsche driving experience day is really a taster day for some of the other products that Porsche sell to their customers or to their potential customers. The, those, those products basically being the driving experience day days which are sort of three to seven hundred dollar days uh, well not days they're like an hour and a half of just experiencing a particular model of car at their um, at their Atlanta Georgia Center uh, and then and that's a pretty if you can get to if you live close by or you're willing to go down it's a pretty useful experience so that you really know what you're getting when you're buying forking out so much money for one of these cars uh, there is a uh, driving experience day that I'm very interested in doing which is the two versus four which is it gives you sort of 45 minutes in a Carrera 2S and then 45 minutes in a Carrera 4S on a track with a professional driver get, helping you get the most out of it and that would be very interesting to me to, to really understand the differences between a two and a four uh, before making a decision whether to go with a two-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive 911. Uh, the other thing they're pushing, of course, is the Porsche Sport Driving School, which is where the real money is. Uh, these are multi-day, normally uh, two or three days, uh, and they're with professional drivers, really with you on the track, teaching you to get the most out of your cars. Uh, and, and they're quite expensive, you know, they range from 3000 up to six or six and a half thousand. But considering what you get, you get a professional driver with you for two or three days, it, it's probably it's not too bad and I see that most of them are always just about booked out so they're obviously very popular uh, and that's down in Birmingham Alabama so you'd have to get all the way down there if you want to take one of those but yeah I'm interested in doing some of those as well if I when I get my new car is to, to get the most out of your car you know it'd be great to spend some time with a professional on a track um, just learning the the little secrets to um, to track time and, and get in the performance limits of these cars so anyway back to the um, to the Porsche experience day the Porsche experience day was interesting from my point of view in that while we didn't get a lot of time in each car we got time in a lot of cars and it's very rare to have such an experience where you're driving on a track you know one or two laps at a time um, so many different varieties of Porsche um, and you know they had a lot there they had uh, a pretty broad range of 911s uh, they had the and and all the rest of the cars as well you know they had the Cayman they had a uh, Boxsters um, and of course they had the McCann and all sorts of Panameras and Cayennes uh, and so it was very interesting even if you're only on the track for a short time to jump from one car to another and experience them back to back it's very rare to have that that sort of experience and it really taught me a lot about these cars even though it was very short and very they were very specific and very limited on what you're allowed to do uh, it was a very interesting day from my point of view so where will we start let's let's say we'll start with the 911s and as I said before they had a good range of them uh, and we'll start with the the very best one there the GT3 and of course, as you'd expect, the GT3 just this is this is its happy hunting ground. It's so it's so at home on the track. And uh, how how the day worked was um, you got to drive the car yourself, but you were limited to the speed that the pace car in front of you set. So there was a pace car in front of the group, and he set the pace so that it was safe. And the reason for that, I guess, is because the skill level of the drivers of the day were so varied. There were some some people that were just uh, just hopeless in the cars and other people that were just raring to go and so they sort of had to set an intermediary pace and that was a little and I guess that was the most frustrating thing when driving the GT3 was that you really never got anywhere near its capacity um, you know I very when I took it around the track I, I I think I got my foot to the floor briefly once or twice the rest of the time it was just it was just cruising for the for the GT3, whereas a lot of the other cars at the same speeds, uh, they were really getting pushed to, to keep up. Um, so yeah, for the GT3, it was a fun car to drive. It's nice to experience it on the track, but you know it was nowhere near its limits. And so, um, you know, 
it, it was fun, but it was uh, it was not that exciting to drive because it was pretty uh, it was a pretty uh, pretty slow for the GT3, but still fun. At the other end of the scale on the 911 range um, was this poor little uh, Frankenstein's daughter, the 911 Targa 4 GTS. Um, this this car really surprised me. Um, you know, both Peter and I drove this car this and I, you know, I knew that it was going to be top heavy because the Targas are um, and this car even had yeah. the Porsche dynamic chassis control, the, anti, the active anti-rolling uh, system that, that you can get with the 911s. Oh, you yeah, feel how much more body roll it's got. I, I was just going to say, <laughs> I saw that right away. I mean, the GT3, just like nothing. Yeah. And despite having that, this car was just so off the pace well. compared to all the other 911s. Um, and I guess that's because it has sort of a triple hit to it. What I mean by that is uh, it's, it's already one of the slower, uh, top heavy cars because it's a Targa. Um, so it's already at a disadvantage compared to the other 911s because of all that weight on the roof. Uh, and then of course it's a four wheel drive so you've got the extra weight of the four wheel drive system. But then I believe it being a GTS made the, system, made, made the situation even worse still. You know, it's having to drag around all that GTS stuff. Um, and it's got the GTS engine, which really doesn't suit this car, you know. I think this car is really going to benefit from the new three litre turbos because it really needs more um, mid-range well, torque the pickup, and this car struggled and we were so surprised even with yeah. the uh, yeah. an active anti-rolling this car just rolled around the track and it wasn't just us um, you know yeah, even though Peter and I both found yeah. the same thing driving this car that um, yeah, yeah. that it was just so off the pace compared to all the other 911s uh, at, at the end of the day we got to we got to ride with some professional drivers as well and I noticed that the the professional drivers when they they drove the Targa 4 GTS, it was also way, way off the pace. It was always coming and last. It was a long way behind all the other cars. This car is definitely the slowest of the group. Um, you know, it could have its ass handed to it by a base model Carrera. There's no question about that. So yeah, really interesting to see, you know, if you just drove the Targa on its own, uh, you'd be completely unaware that it's anything but a great car and you know I'm not saying that it's not a great car you know it's still a 911 it's still a fast car but compared to all the other 911s this car was just uh, just yeah, not up to the grade um, it was very interesting to drive another car that was similar um, not quite as bad was the um, 911 Carrera for GTS uh, this was a Cabriolet model so once again it uh, it was suffering from having the extra weight of the Cabriolet, having the extra weight of the four-wheel drive, and I, I believe um, the GTS system sort of hampers them as well. I know the GTS engines are supposed to be more powerful, and they are. They have a little bit, you know, you can feel the extra, the pip at the top of their revs, but, you know, I feel that, you know, the G, the, that power that extra power engine uh, loses mid-range torque and that's what these heavier cars really need uh, and so well, this, this was another car easy. that was kind of off the pace it wasn't in anywhere as bad as the Targa but it was also always at the back of the pack um, that's where you would normally come out of that last yeah. corner yeah. and hammer the last corner yeah and to get down the straight and surprisingly, at the end of the day, the car that shone the most, and perhaps both Peter and I are a little bit biased because we both either own or owned or plan to own uh, a Carrera S. Um, but yeah, the car that really shined that day and the one that we both enjoyed driving the most was the Carrera S. Um, you know, the, the Carrera S always, I, I always, always come back to the Carrera S because it's such, um, such a wonderful, light, basic 911. Uh, it just does everything so well uh, and I truly believe when it comes to a 911 often less is more and that was certainly proven on this driving day you know every time we got to drive the Carrera S we just had more fun and felt more in control than most of the other cars you know with the exception of the GT3 which is you know track based monster or a car take that out of the equation the Carrera S was by far the best car for the track there that day 
um, and they didn't have a career of 4S, I'm sure that would have been the same situation where it just, just the basic models uh, just do such a great job both on and off the track. Uh, they really show up a lot of the other more expensive, more complex models. So yeah, I, I came away just in love with the Carrera S that day. On to some of the bigger cars. Um, the one I was really excited about driving was the McCann Turbo. Uh, as you guys know, I've uh, reviewed my mum's uh, McCann Diesel. Yes, um, and and so I was keen to have a drive with the McCann Turbo on the track. You know, Porsche market the McCann Turbo is yeah. there is their sports car SUV. Still wasn't uh, and away, in a way, they're right. You know, <laughs> there was no other the car Airport. there that day outside of the 911s and the other sports cars, the the Boxers and the and the Caymans that performed anywhere as well as the McCann Turbo. You know it. Amongst the, the SUVs and the Panameras, the McCann Turbo just shined. It just oh, kicked shame. the ass at everything else. Um, it really is a fun car to drive. But compared to the sports cars, it's, it's not in the same league, you know. Uh, it was so much fun to drive around the track. Uh, and yeah, and towards the end engine. of the day, uh, I got to have a yeah. ride in the McCann Turbo loaded up. Um, that is, we had four adults in it and a professional driver and he took us around the track at the fastest speed he possibly could. Uh, and it was interesting to watch him drive because uh, unlike driving any of the 911s or other sports cars around the track with the professional drivers where they just they shot around the track but they were really in control of the car the whole time. The McCann Turbo, um, the, the professional drivers were really soaring at the wheel to keep it on the road. Um, sure, it was doing a great job and it was a lot of fun to be there, but I was really surprised just how much work they had to put in to keep that thing on the road. Um, but it, it just stood up to the punishment. It was great. Every time it came in, uh, there was just smoke absolutely pouring off the wheels from the, from the stress of the track, uh, having so many people in the car and going so fast around the track, and it just, it just shook it off and it was ready to go again each time. It, was, it really is a fantastic way, SUV, but yeah, but yeah it's, it certainly can't be called a sports car. It wasn't in the same league as, as the sports cars, but uh, as close as possibly could be. Yeah. Uh, and we got to drive some interesting cars in this bracket as well. Um, a car that uh, I found kind of interesting was the Panamera S um, Hybrid. This is the Panamera S E Hybrid. Excitement. Uh, the one with some batteries and electric. I'd never driven one of those before. Yeah, it adds electric um, power. And there was even a, um, a hybrid uh, Cayenne there as well. Uh, which was which was kind of fun to drive as well. Uh, just adds a little bit of top end, but also adds a bit of weight. Um, and of course, there were standard uh, Cayennes and uh, standard um, uh, Panameras. And speaking of the standard Panameras, uh, <laughs> there was one car which I just thought was completely outclassed by the rest of the Porsche cars there that day, and that's this poor Panamera Four. It was a brand new car. There was no no reason why it should uh, be it should be considered a bad car. But and and if you drove one without driving any other Porsche vehicle, you'd be perfectly happy with it. Um, you know, it's a comfortable, big cruising saloon. But when when oh, <laughs> when driven back to back one. with any other Porsche vehicle, and I say any other, including the base model Cayenne. Um, this is, car is, it is just so off the pace. Um, no it pickup. struggled. It struggled to take corners. It struggled to get off the line. And most surprisingly, it struggled to stop. The amount of, um, the amount of brake travel on this car was... Oh, the brakes are gone in this one. <laughs> it almost goes to the floor. Exactly. It's so fatal felt in the other one. And this is, I'm um, wide open. The was at was first open. a little shocking. Um, you know, no you jump up. in this car after jumping in any other of the other Porsche vehicles, and you've got two or three inches of extra pedal you have to push down yeah. in order to get this yeah, thing man. to start biting. <laughs> and it had all the, it was loaded up <laughs> oh with all sorts God. of sports extras and everything, and this poor car just, you know, Zero. I we had to just give it, it, 
its all to keep up with the other cars and it was just rolling through the corners I mean it's a heavy car and it's kind of underpowered for the, the weight of the car uh, but it is a Porsche and so it should still be able to keep up with some of the other Porsches but man uh, yeah I, I was really surprised at just how off the pace this Panamera 4 was and um, I would really recommend people think twice about getting a Panamera 4 you know at least get the S and get that turbocharged engine with all that extra power it really needs it and and the slightly bigger brakes it really needs it um, but I guess if you're just driving around the you know, regular roads it's fine but yeah it was quite a shock to me how much off the pace the Panamera 4 was Surprisingly, the most challenging uh, circuit of the day for me was with uh, Panamera S Hybrid. Um, the reason for that being is, you know, it's not a car that's at home on the track. Obviously, it's a big, heavy car as well, but it's got a little bit more power because it's the S and it's the Hybrid. Um, but I was lucky enough to be behind a pace car that was willing to open it up a bit. Uh, and once he saw that I was right, sticking right with him, he really um, put his foot down and took off. Uh, and so it became a, a fun, a fun, a fun run around the track because uh, I was able to really open up the Panamera S and have a lot of fun with it around the track. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a really fun, uh, really fun circuit that one, just because I was, I was really trying to get the most out of that car. Those poor tyres. <laughs> Come on Cayenne, yes. Try and leave us behind. <laughs> I say you did a guy like that. You, you pressed this guy a little bit. He's probably a little surprised to see you hanging with him. Yep. Nicely done, Nick. <laughs> You've got everything on this car. Now. So overall, you know, it was a really great day. Um, it was a it was a little bit of a shame that I couldn't get uh, video of all the cars we drove. It, it was a bit of a strange inconsistency with some of the Porsche people there. Uh, sometimes when I go to jump in a car, I'd always ask, "Can I take my cameras?" And I'd, you know, nine times out of ten, they'd say, "Yeah, sure, sure, take them, film it, whatever you want to do." But every now and then, one of them would say, "No, no." cameras are not allowed here you can't take those cameras with you uh, which is really odd it was just one or two guys that always did that and um, and th so there's no consistency on whether I could film or not uh, but I get, did get a little bit of film from most of the cars so it's how I was able to put together this video but yeah overall it was a very interesting day and I came back came away with um, uh, with with some real insight as to just how different a lot of these cars that are supposedly almost the same are once you just add a little bit more weight here or there or a few extra features here or there it really impacts their performance on the track that's for sure even a even a fairly um, uh, fairly easy going track day like this uh, you could really feel and see the difference um, both through, through your own driving and, and through the driving of the professional drivers there so yeah very 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 interesting day and I was uh, very pleased that um, Porsche let me come along and I really appreciate uh, getting the insight into some of these cars and it was a lot of fun so yeah if, uh, if you ever get a chance to do a Porsche driving day I would strongly recommend it it's it's a real eye-opening experience and it's uh, obviously a lot of fun uh, and uh, and uh, it was free so that's the right price as well anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed this video um, I will uh, I will certainly keep you posted on progress of me ordering my 911 which will probably not be till the end of the year um, but yeah I'd really love to go along as I said earlier in the video and do that uh, two versus four um, day and, and get a, a true feel as to whether or not I should get the two-wheel drive or the four-wheel drive. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye then. exciting it was very exciting <laughs> a little too exciting <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you very Steve. good tim